So we're going to take a look at the AppSpec YAML file, which is responsible for um, uh, saying where the code should be installed and how to get the new piece of code running. Uh, and this example here is actually from the exam pros Ruby on Rails application. It's an older version, but it makes still for a very great example of a real world um, uh, uh, use of this AppSpec YAML. So we'll just walk through this, and there is some variation on this file here, but uh, this file is a very good example. So the first thing is we choose our OS. This could be Linux or Windows. Then for files, we are saying where the code should be downloaded to. So forward slash is uh, after that zip is, because uh, you provide um, the code in the form of a zip. So wherever that zip resides, take it and put it in home EC2 user app, because I want it to be an app. Then we can apply permissions to anywhere. So I just want to make sure that EC2 user is the owner of that app directory. And then we have our hooks. So you have an application st stop. So this command uh, should be responsible for doing the stop. If you notice, uh, we're providing a location to a bash file. So the way AppSpec YAML works is you write bash scripts for all of them, and then you specify them uh, with part of the zip that is provided to code deploy. So the AppSpec YAML will be in a zip, and then all these files, so this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, they'll all be in that um, zip there. Um, then you have a timeout, so you can set a timeout. I think there's one by, uh, by default, but if you know generally how long these are going to run, you should set them because this will just speed up the process if one of these hang for whatever reason. Then you can set what it should run as. So I would always say EC2 user, especially with Amazon Linux 1 and uh, Amazon Linux 2. And let's look at some of the other hooks. So we have before install, so that's before it's downloaded the code to your server. After install, things that you'd want it to happen afterwards. And then um, uh, commands to restart the application up. And I want to point out that the lifecycle event hooks are uh, are going to be different based on whether you're using EC2, ECS, and Lambda. So you have to look up the documentation to what's available to you. But this is for an EC2 instance. And so this is the most common uh, use case.